Peggy here and welcome to today's Facebook Live. It is Thursday, April the 21st, 2022 and our topic today is how to lightly intend, how to lightly intend. So if you are here in person, please say hello in the comments section. If you have any comments, questions at any time during this, please let me know. I will answer them and I'm looking at the comments section right now. And if you're watching this on replay, please put hashtag replay. And if you have any questions or comments as you're watching the replay, please put those in as well. And as you know, all of our um, lives, all events in answering the call and all the work that I do really is to help us answer the call, two kinds of calls. Hey, Lucy. No, not on Zoom. Just, uh, just Facebook Live today. Yeah. Um, answering the call in two ways. One is most of us have some sort of longing, a sense that we're not quite fulfilled, not quite happy, peaceful, something's just off in our lives. And that longing is actually an invitation from our essential nature to come home to ourselves, to know who we truly are. So that's the first calling. And then the second calling is as human beings, we're here to create, to manifest, to live fully as our unique expression of the universe. And we want to know what that is and live that out fully. So that's what we do here uh, in answering the call. And again, welcome today. And uh, we will be talking about how to lightly intend. And we're going to explore three components of that. One, the first is, what's the most current understanding of how to intend? So, so a lot of us have been following protocols and theories and what uh, you know, things we've been told for many years and now there's a very current understanding which uh, uh, pretty much says we don't need to do a lot of things that we were taught many years ago and just until recently most a lot of people were still teaching. Uh, and then how to become calm and centered before intending. So that's part of what's key to intending in this light way that I'm going to suggest today. And then how do we lightly intend through a felt sense and or words? So the most current understanding. So traditionally, when we uh, learned the correct way to intend in order to manifest, and in fact, I just took a course uh, over the last year that still had most of what I'm about to say in place. So this is how current uh, the material is that I'm giving to you today. It's like less than six months old. So um, so the traditional way, got to be real specific. What's your intention? Be specific. Put a time frame. Put, if it's money, put a number. If it's a relationship, what are all the qualities? All that, all, just as many details as we can be specific. Visualize. Have some sort of visualization either through closing your eyes and visualizing or some sort of images or storyboard cut or whatever they're called. I never did do visual visualization board, I think is what it's called. And then maybe do affirmations on top of that. Well, you can still do that and many people still do that and uh, many still manifest out of that. The, the reason we don't have to do it that way is because it's sort of a forceful thing. We're forcing ourselves to visualize, forcing ourselves to intend to come up with all of this criteria. So what are we doing? We're using our mind to manifest instead of our infinite nature, our essential nature to help us manifest. Also, often, if we do everything I just said that's typically taught, it, it can create resistance. It can help us feel uncomfortable every time we repeat the affirmation or try to visualize again or remind ourselves of what we're intending. It can actually create some dissonance because we go, but it's not here yet. So we're in, unintentionally focusing on the fact that it's not here yet because we keep going back and trying to intend. So by definition, we're saying it's not here yet. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if it doesn't. Um, so it does. So it creates a tension and keeps reinforcing that we don't have whatever it is that we're want that we're trying to intend and manifest. Um, so it cancels out the intention, and also it keeps the universe from bringing to us what it knows 
would be actually the most supportive for our highest good. The universe is infinite potential. So what our mind can't even imagine is available to us if we would just let the universe give us, bring us what it is that aligns with what we truly want. Um, yeah. So one of the keys, and of course what we always work with here too, is we, we want to know our essential nature. Our essential nature is the infinite being that we are, the oneness that we are, the infinite potential that we are. So what I talk about very all the time, uh, not so much today, is that that's one of the foundations that actually comes before everything we're talking about today. So just to let you know, that's one of the keys is you do want to keep working with knowing your essential nature and living is that. So here's the most current understanding with intentions, is that we want to start by being calm and centered like an empty space. That's back to your essential nature. So I'll get go into more detail about that in a minute. But that's the place we start, knowing our essential nature and being in that open, centered, allowing, empty space. We don't need words or images. We don't need words or images, so I'm going to tell you how to do it without that in a minute. Well, I'm about to do it now. <laughs> Looking at my notes. And so it's a felt sense. So we actually don't want to be trying to use words or use words. We want to use a felt sense. And I'll explain how to do that in a minute. So it's the feeling quality that's the most important. I've been saying this for years and years in a different context, which is that our prayers are not the words that we say, but the energy that we send to the universe. So if we're praying, you know, please bring me, you know, this great wonderful man, but I'm feeling heartbroken. I'm sending a prayer of heartbreak. So the universe gets the message to send me more heartbreak. So that's what I mean by um, by our energetic sense and the feeling quality is the most important. Anyway, it always has been. And when we know what it is we want, and I guess I'll get to that in a minute, we want to feel it fully and intend and then don't go back to it. We want to trust. Why, why do we need to keep going back to it? If we keep going back to it, what are we saying? Oh, it's not here yet. So then we're reinforcing it's not here, which then we might really want to start over with the process because of our traditional way of relating to these things. Um, you know, we might keep coming back and, and so we might have to keep then reintending. But, but the idea is to get so good at this that we don't uh, interrupt our manifestation process by questioning reminding ourselves it's not here yet and so on so so at the beginning we're feeling it fully um, knowing that as we feel it we're releasing it to the universe again I'll come to more detail in that I'm just giving you the overview of what the current understanding is and so we want to stay in the energy of what it is we're intending and then keep returning to that energy we want to just keep staying in alignment but not in reference to the intention because if we go back to the intention we're probably at some level going, it's not here yet, and then we're undermining the whole thing. All right, so how do we become calm and centered? So first thing is to stop. Okay, I'm ready to intend. So maybe I'm starting the day, or maybe I'm about to, for me, writing. If I'm about to write something. Maybe you're about to go to a meeting. Or, maybe, or, um, or you're going out into the world, and, and just how you want to be as you're out in the world. Or maybe it's to make more money. Maybe it has something to do with money. So you stop, and then you tune into your essential nature. So the way I do it, well, I've done it so much that I don't have to go through the process that I'm about to offer you. But if you're new to connecting with your essential nature, the one of the ways to do it is to ask yourself, am I aware? Like you're aware right now that you're listening to me, you're watching this, you're... You're absorbing it, um, you're sitting where you're sitting, and then to pause, am I aware that I'm aware? Or do I know that I'm aware? It's that knowing that's our essential nature, that knowing that um, uh, that is the space in which I'm aware. So it's the open, empty space of knowing, pure knowing. I know that that I'm aware, that, that knowing is our essential nature, that open space. So we go to that space, to that awareness that we are. And then to get calm and centered, 
We let our thoughts go. We let our feelings go. Again, if this is the beginning for you, it takes a lot of practice. A lot of practice. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> We're going to have fun manifesting from letting the universe you know, bring us what we, what we want, what our heart's desires are. So, and we also have to do emotional work and energy work, which is beyond the, 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 our session this week. I've talked about it before. Did it, of course, last week in the Direct Path to Happiness workshop. So, uh, so you still have to do that uh, along the way, too, because, because why do we need to do that? Because our energy field has a historical blockage, especially if there are some sort of intentions that, that we want to have that are related to old patterns that have that we've had for years and years and years, and there's going to be energy work and emotional work to clear the energy. So you want to do that too. All right, so we get to this calm, balanced, neutral inner state. And even though you might have energy work to do and emotional work, to, I mean, yeah, emotional work to do, um, um, you can start this today. It, you don't have to do that first. But as you engage in this, you might notice emotional patterns coming or you can set them aside and know you'll come back to them but uh, but so for the purposes of intending if you want to do it like after this session then you do want to get yourself to that calm centered place and, and you might be able to do it without doing the emotional work first or clearing yourself first and that'd be great so you can do this without having to do that I'm, I'm repeating myself aren't I okay so you want to get to that calm, balanced, neutral inner state and be in this space where you can feel there's a flow. You're feeling the openness and the vastness. And you're staying open because you want to remember that energy goes where attention, I mean, energy flows where attention goes. So you want to have an open intention so there's an open flow of energy and not focused on something that's going to block the energy. So that's how to become calm and centered. Now, how do you lightly intend? So we'll assume that you've gotten to a place where you're sitting calmly. And then what you can do is just see what arises. Because your being knows what to intend. Your being knows what it is you want already. The universe knows what you want already. So you can actually be in this space, this calm, centered space, and see what arises, and it'll tell you what to intend. So I'll give you an example from me not too long ago. I was on a call, kind of a, uh, an hour-long you know, brown bag workshop on speaking engagements, and I was listening to this woman and, he and hearing the, the presentation. It just, it just came to me, oh. I want to do some speaking engagements. That's what I'm talking about. It just came to me. I wasn't trying to, I wasn't using my mind. Oh, now I need to get speaking engagements and I start plotting that out. No, it was just me being present, listening to this. And I've had this felt sense that I'll describe in more detail here in a minute. But I had this felt sense. Oh, I want more speaking engagements. And I felt it. I, it, I energized that sense. And within two hours, I had a speaking engagement. I got on a call with a colleague a couple hours later, and the first thing she said is, will you speak at this event in uh, two months? So that's really how it works and how quickly it can work. Again, it can take us a while to get into that uh, way of living regularly because we, we think there's time, there, things have to go through a process, uh, and so as long as we believe that there's time, and, or sorry, that things have to take time and have to go through a process, then uh, it's a little bit more challenging, but, uh, but that's okay. That's okay. We just get better and better at this. Okay, so we're sitting calmly. Something can arise in you like it did with me. Or you might know that you want something. You want more money in your life or you want a relationship. Now, if you're feeling lack at this point, like I need money or I need a relationship, then you don't want to continue. You want to go back and do your emotional work or go sit with yourself until you can calmly get to this place of, you know what, I really already have everything I need. Really, the universe has always provided me everything I need. And you can talk yourself into it until you can feel, yes, right now I have everything I need. I don't need anything. I'm fed, I have a roof over my head, I'm comfortable, you know, 
And so the, to let it really sink in, I have everything I need. So you want to be in that felt sense of that. And then, then, let's say it is money that you want or a relationship. Then you, so our mind at this point might say, okay, I want $100,000. Okay, but we're not going to get that far. We're not going to get to the point of using words or some sort of visualization like that. I'm giving you that as an example of what the mind might try to do. We're not going to do what the mind wants to do. So what we're going to do instead, we're going to sit calmly. We have a general intention that we want more money. And then we're going to just feel, have a felt sense of the money that we want. Feel about what, feel the abundance that your life is. What's the feeling quality? What's the energetic essence of abundance? And let that arise. Let yourself feel, have that felt sense of this incredible abundance in your life. You don't need any words. You're just, so again, you know you want more money. You, you've got a, to a calm, still space. Then you just, it's, it's, you don't use words. It's just all feeling, all energy. Allow yourself to experience abundance. You'll have some felt sense of that. Then you energize it. It's like a directional force. And then you send it off. And that's actually the process. Wow, Lucy, that's great. Lucy says she's feeling it right now. That's great. Now I'm going to... Go back over my notes, see if I've missed anything. Yeah, so you're directing the energy at that point. And then because you know, the felt sense has arisen, you know it has to do with money. You can do the same thing with relationship, with health, with anything. A career, a meeting you're about to go to. So you just get to this, it's, it's money. You just feel this abundance. Feel it fully. Let it be fully energized. And then you direct the energy, meaning you just... Let it go. Um, now, in the past, we might have wanted specific results or we might have expectations. You don't want to do that. Your mind might go there. Let all that go. You're only focusing on that moment's intention when you're feeling that. Try not to have expectations. Try not to have, think about past results. And then throughout all, every day, all the time, what you're doing is reminding yourself that you're the boundless, you are the boundless universe. You're not even in the universe. You're not part of the universe. You're not connected to the universe. You are the infinite boundless universe. We live as a seemingly separate individual, but we want to make it more and more real for ourselves. But I'm not separate. <laughs> I am the universe. I am this infinite potential. And again, if you've been on my these sessions, or a lot of them, you've known that science says the same thing. So this isn't a new age thought. This isn't you know, some religious thought that's not real. All great religious traditions and wisdom traditions say what I just said. And now science backs it up. We are one infinite being. So we can let ourselves start to realize that. But it's not even a belief. It's, we want to be feeling it because a belief then kicks in our mind. We want to feel it. Feel this boundless, unlimited being that we are. We give rise to everything in the universe. And when we think we're separate, then that limits our ability in the universe. And of course, we are the universe, but it limits the ability of what can be created and what can come to us. Because if we believe we're separate and we're limited, then that, by definition, is going to limit what can, is available to us. So the more and more we can sit with and know who we truly are. That's right, Lucy, limitless, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for adding that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh, now, when we're sitting, like I said, with um, maybe you're going to write or maybe back to money or back to a relationship, so you just have a sense, the felt sense. This takes, we're not used to doing this. So again, if this seems like what it felt sense, it takes a little work, takes a little practice. Um, but, but it's, but, but another way to think about it is 
this. It's like an impulse. We've all had impulses. You know, say this or go here or do this. It's that sort of thing. It's that feeling of an impulse, kind of a spark. Sometimes ideas will come. Concepts can come. Physical sensations can come. You want to trust any of those. We don't have to have words. We don't have to have anything visual. No expectations. No past limitations. Just these sensations. We want to be trying to live as best we can as like a child in wonder and amazement. Just living life without expectations, without the history taking over. You can think of it this way, that our good is knocking on the door waiting to come in. So we'll be ready for it. We'll be open to it. Let's see. Um, we want to stop fighting whatever's happening in our lives. So if we're resisting our situation and we want to sit with ourselves till we can feel that we're not fighting it, we're just allowing it. Um, your mind is going to want to tell you what your intentions are, but you don't want to listen to the mind. You can just silently say, or quiet, you know, softly say, "Thank you. I don't, I don't need you right now. I'll, I'll let you know when I do." Because you want to let these senses come to you, the feeling and the energy come to you. Okay, I think I've covered it all. Um, so when we want abundance, we go to the essential nature of ourselves, the abundance that we are. We want maybe uh, a, a quality in a relationship or a relationship. What's the what's the essence, the energetic essence of what we want? And we don't go to words. We now we might find ourselves going there because that's how we've been conditioned to engage in intentions. That's fine. Just back off of that and then let let because your being knows. So let the being inform. And help, and you'll feel the energy, and then you, you uh, embrace the energy, you energize the energy, and then let it go. Letting it go is key. Because that's the other thing. If we keep coming back to it, it hadn't happened yet, and start worrying about it, again, historical patterns, then check in with yourself, again, a felt sense, so you might revisit this intention. But we'll get good enough, you'll get good enough, we'll get good enough eventually that we'll, we'll be in this process all the time, 24-7, everything we do, that we're living that way. This is really how we're meant to live. We're meant for our minds to help us when, let's say, there's a particular problem to solve, or you've got to call, call an airline to get something figured out. Yeah, we use our minds for that, but so we're reversing how we've used our minds. We're not, we're not using them to create intentions. We're using them to support intentions when it's time to do that. Let's see. All right, I think I covered it. I duplicated my notes here. <laughs> so we're going to the energy that's beyond words. Pure intention is a rearrangement of the formless energy that there is. So we're, we're feeling it. It's already there. It's right waiting to show up and form. But we, but we've got to match the energy. We've got to be in alignment with the energy, and then we stay there. We stay there, and if we lose it, we start worrying about something, maybe it's even something else, we come back to this energy. We want to stay in this energetic field, this pattern that aligns with what it is we want, and stay there as much as we can, keep coming back, keep coming back. And no, have this sense of inner peace. We want to be cultivating that as well, a sense of inner peace, knowing that everything you ask for comes to you in the right way for you or me, the divine way and the divine timing. So it's living in that peace and that knowing that it will happen in the divine way that it's supposed to happen. Oh, another thing. Once, we, once we've sensed that energy, then, the, then we've already sent the energies out into the field. It's already kicking in. It's responding immediately to our energetic pattern. So know that. The universe is responding immediately to that energetic pattern. And if we, if we worry, we've undone it. So you can check in. Do I need to go back and repeat this? That's fine. That's fine. But we don't do it. We, so we try. Here's what the ideal is, too, is that once we do that, that we, that we let it go. We just trust it's going to happen. I don't need to ask myself a week later, has it shown up yet? Did it happen? Do I? We want to get really good at knowing we've intended. It's done. It's on its way. And then not think about it, not worry about it, let it go. So today we covered 
the most current understanding of how to intend, which is all, it's all about energy and the, this felt sense, let it arise and not use our mind to think of how to do it. Um, and then become calm and centered, go back to our essential nature. It's, uh, I mean, it's who we are, but, at, but as humans, it's useful to have that way of thinking about, it. oh yeah, I'm gonna return, I'm gonna sink back into my essential nature and get to that calm, empty, open space, the pure flow of energy and you know, throughout our day to go back there as much as we can because we want to eventually get to the place that that's where we're living. We're living in that open space all the time. And then how to lightly intend, just in general, you sense into whatever it is that you're wanting to intend. If it's abundance or a relationship or let's say you want to write, I do a lot of writing, then, um, then I just sit there and just sit with that intention that, that of what I want to bring to the writing and then something will arise, I energize it, and then I know that the words are going to start coming to me and through me as I start writing. Any questions? Any other comments? And if you have questions on the replay, please put them in and I will respond. Now, um, you don't, so as you probably have seen in the group, uh, there's a workshop coming up, a praxis really, not a workshop praxis, uh, the, uh, the wild ones out in the field foundational praxis. It's a 12 week praxis that begins uh, April the 30th. And please, if that interests you at all, put a, either DM me or put in the comment that you want to talk to me about it. And this is part of the praxis. Is this will, we'll be bringing this into the praxis as well. So you're going to be knowing your essential nature, beginning to embody that more fully, work, do emotional work, energetic work. This is also part of, part of uh, the, the energy work and the intention work. And um, so I'd love for you to join us and, and so that you can get the support if you want additional support besides these, these sessions to, to live as who you truly are and be able to live in the world as we're really meant to live. So let me know, love for you. It's a 12 week practice, it's a foundation. So you build a strong foundation and it's an embodied foundation. I don't just teach about something. I don't teach concepts. That's part of it. But my commitment, my goal is that people are living all of this. So that's what I bring to the praxis is that you're actually living all of this that, that I'm talking about, not just learning about it, not just learning how. Now in these, these sessions, that's, that's, that's the nature of these sessions, talking about it and how to do it. But in the praxis, we also roll up our sleeves and we uh, learn to live, live all of this. So love for you to join us. Let me know if you want to talk to me about it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy, again, for being here today. And thank everybody for watching. And I hope to hear from you soon. And we'll see you uh, hopefully next week. Bye.